He was like, I'd rather be waterboarded. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the bottom of the third. A lot of technical difficulties, but we are finally back. Uh, while we were getting it fixed, Whitefish Bay took the lead in Whitefish Bay fashion with a home run and a couple of RBI singles by a bunch of D1 commits, which is what we expected. Carson Faust style up for the Blackhawks. Two, three, four are due. So four to two is our score here in the bottom of the third. As that one is popped up into shallow center field, right fielder running after it, and he'll make the catch for out number one. Up now is Hunter Schmidt, followed by Tresky. Yeah, Tresky. And Brett Schaefer. Wait for that fastball. <laughs> First pitch to Schmidt. That one is also popped up. Right center field. That one is back, back, and that's off the wall. Ball kept carrying with the wind here today. That's a stand-up double. Ball keeps carrying. It looked like, sounded like it was popped up, but he gave a rip there. So a one-out double for Caden Tresky. Schaefer with the flow. <laughs> Do you remember when he hit that nuke in the All Stars? Bro? Yeah. That was we good. were getting like run gold. Didn't your guys' team lose about like 30 to Whitefish Bay? Like way back in the day? Yes. Yes, we did. I was seventh grade. We I, lost. Did, I did not play on that you team. You weren't on that team, no. Neither was I. I that was, I remember that. that. Uh, it was, yeah, 30 to 4. Was the score? Why did they call it? Someone hit a home. They scored the runs it, in yeah. the three innings. Oh, okay. four innings, yeah. Because <laughs> they they did it so quickly. Hey, we could have lost by that much, Calvin McHenry. Oh, that first game. Okay, and Tresky pops up to short, and Schmidt holds over at second. Is that even Schmidt on second? I don't know. It's a courtesy runner. Good eyes. I think it is. Yeah, it's Trevor yeah. Marine. He's fast. Yeah, he is. Fast, fast. I mean, Hunt's done fishing, right? Yeah. No. Oh, he's a courtesy runner. Oh, he's a pitcher. Yeah. So here's Brett Schaefer now with two outs and a runner on second. Schaefer, ground ball on the right. Base hit. Around comes Marine with his wheels. Oh, the right fielder bobbled it. Schaefer's heading to second. The throw over to second. Got him, but the run counts four to three. So that ends the third, our final, excuse me, end of the third, four to three. A lot of happened there in a short amount of time. We go to the fourth. Oh, Brett. 
Dude, who's the who's the first base coach? That's a new guy. Forgot. You make a song. Used to be. I played this in the car. But I did not. Did wait for that. All right, we're back now. Top of the fourth. Our score is four to three. Grafton got one back in the bottom of the third on a RBI single from Brett Schaefer. 9-1-2 are due for the Blue Dukes. As the catcher up to bat. Every single player on this lineup can hit for Whitefish Bay. There's no doubt about it. As Grafton can hopefully put up a zero here in the fourth and try to get back in this. And maybe take the lead. That one is fouled back. I play. They'll take one run at a time, no doubt about it. As Grafton faces Goliath for the second time this year. Grafton took Whitefish Bay to seven innings at Whitefish Bay. That was two and a half weeks ago. Whitefish Bay would later blow it open in the sixth and seventh inning, as they normally do take the win it's difficult facing five d1 commits in a row up to bat that one has popped up over in the center field no one's going to get to it and that will be a base hit so the leadoff man is on base once again for whitefish bay So back to the top of the order for the Blue Dukes. Jack Council. University of Michigan commits. As there will be a courtesy runner for Whitefish Bay's catcher. Jack Council, obviously, the name sounds familiar. Son of Brewers manager Craig Council. His older brother also played for Whitefish Bay last year as well, as he committed to Minnesota. Schmidt looked back over the first. The runner was in there safely. Nobody out here in the fourth. Schmidt comes set. Fires. Runner goes. That one has popped up. That one was supposed to be a hit and run. So the runner will make his way back over the first. Not a bad day out, except with the wind. Well, it doesn't feel terrible unless it really picks up. Throws back over the first again in there safely. All these guys can run for Whitefish Bay as well. This is a scary offense to face. No matter who you are on the North Shore, runner goes again. That ball is high. This time, he is safe. So 
Cameron Easy has yet to throw one out. It's a tough task, no doubt about it. It'll happen eventually. The pitch in there for strike two. <laughs> Count is full, if I did my math correctly. Here it is. That one is ripped in the center. Base hit. Rounding third. He will hold that third, so runners on the corners for the Blue Dukes. And Mitch Voigt up to bat again. Homered his last time up into left field. As that's what gave Whitefish Bay their two runs to tie it, and then Bay would later score two more in the second. Runner goes. No throw from Vince. So two runners in scoring position now with nobody out for Voight. The pitch. That one hit to right. Hillebrand running back makes the catch. Nice play there for an out. Runner tags and will score. Both runners will tag. And another run is scorched Whitefish Bay. It is now five to three. Nice play there from Hildebrand and Wright to get the first out. There's Michael Livy now, another power hitter in this lineup. This is no easy task from Grafton today. It never is. You play Whitefish Bay. First pitch to Lippy's in there for a strike. 0 oh, 1. At one, fouled over to Bay's dugout. 0 oh, 2. Runner on third, one out. Here in the top of the fourth. Stand corrected. There are two outs here in the top of fourth. The L2. That one grounded to Hunter Schmidt. Go to first in time. For out number two. So another run scores for Whitefish Bay. Scores now six to three in favor of the Blue Dukes. Here's DJ, or excuse me, JD Dix. First pitch to him. Off speed. Just the ball, one and oh. Just inside. Not a bad pitch there from Schmidt. Caden Tresky looks to be warming up behind the dugout for Grafton. That is ground ball right back to Schmidt. He'll take care of it himself. And that is out number three. So Whitefish Bay gets two more. Our score, six to three.
Back now, bottom of the fourth. Cameron Easy will lead things off for the Blackhawks. Our score six to three. First pitch to Vince. Gets past the catcher for ball one. One and zero. Oh. Grafton hanging in there so far, scoring three runs in the first three innings. Second pitch to Vince is a ball high. Two and up. Oh. It is hard to stop Whitefish Bay's offense. That ball is swung at. Vince tried to hell hold up there, but could not do it. The two one. That ball is fouled behind the plate. Two and two. This pitcher is trying to work quickly here for Whitefish Bay. He's walked a couple of batters. Hasn't given up many hits. Not a bad start. That one called strike three at the top of the zone. Not the pitch that you would want. But nonetheless, that's out number one. So here's Ryan Quayle now. Nobody on, one out for number four. First pitch to him is a ball outside, one and oh. The one oh. That one grounded a short, fielded cleanly, throw to first in plenty of time for out number two. Two are away quickly here for the Blackhawks. So here's Ben and Hildebrand now. Try to maybe start something. Maybe at least flip the lineup card back over. As there's the nine hitter on deck. First pitch, number seven, is a ball. Low, 1-0. One up. That one swung at. Too short. Plenty of time. Throw to first. Is out. Hildebrand unfortunately tripped on the base. And he gives him a thumbs up. He says he's okay. So that will end the fourth inning. We go to the fifth. Our score Whitefish Bay six, Grafton three.
back now here, top of the fifth. Hunter Schmidt still on the mound. Our score is six to three in favor of the Blue Dukes. First pitch from Schmidt is ripped foul down the left field line, 0 1. DJ Kojis is up for the Blue Dukes. The wind up and the pitch. Thought about it, didn't go. As the ball went into the turf, one and one. One and one is our count. Here it is. That ball is low. Two and one. The two one. That ball in there for strike two. Two and two. Here it is from Schmidt. Off speed. Did not get back into the zone. Count is now full. Three and two. That ball is fouled back. Count is still full. Schmidt trying to win the battle. A 3 2 once again. Here it is. That one is ball four high. And a leadoff man is on base again for Whitefish Bay. It's been the thing that's killed Grafton so far. As Coach Durst calls time, that might be it for number 39. Yep, that will be it for Hunter Schmidt. So, not bad for number 39 as he did his part. Caden Tresky will get loose and will be the new pitcher for the Blackhawks. We'll be right back. We're back. Caden Tresky will now fire for the Blackhawks. Hunter Schmidt still on the field. He'll play left as Wagner 
will be subbed out. So I don't think anything will change hitting wise in the order for the Blackhawks as Tresky was already a DH, so he'll probably just hit for himself. First pitch, that one is hit way back to center field. Lemke can't get there as it goes all the way to the wall. Runner will hold at third, and it's a stand-up double for Whitefish Bay. Not the start that you want for Tresky. The first pitch he saw gave that one a ride. Just a couple of feet short from being out of here, the deepest part of the ballpark. Whitefish Bay, man, it's been it's been a long time since I remembered when they weren't good. They're always in the mix. First pitch from Tresky is a ball just high, one and zero. They are always the team to beat in the North Shore Conference. 1-0 is also high, 2-0. 2 -0. That one's in there for strike one. Hopefully Tresky can bounce back now. It's always hard trying to throw strikes, throw competitive pitches, but against a team like this, they will take advantage of everything as that pitch has swung at and missed for strike two. Two and two is the count. Hopefully Tressie can put him away here with two runners in scoring position. No room for error. That one is popped up. Just out of play. Wind almost put that back in play. Foul ball. Count is still two and two. Here in the top of the fifth. Six to three is our score still. That one popped straight up. Faust will call for it and make the catch for out number one. Both runners will... Stay put. Is that one a little bit difficult for Faust to track, but makes the catch. With this win, any pop-up has a chance. Even in the infield, it's got a chance to drop. You never know where it's going to go. First pitch. He showed bunt. I guess that worked as there was a wild pitch for ball one. He didn't pull back. So I take that back. That's strike one. But a run scores for Whitefish Bay, 7-3 to three now. The runner also from second advanced 90 feet to third. So runner on third, one out. The count 0-1. Oh there it is. Shows bunt again. This time pulls back for ball one, one and one. As he'll probably just bunt. He might just keep showing bunt to try to get that other run in from third. As it's eight nine one. He does this time gets it down, but foul. So one and two. When kind of changing directions, it's got a mind of its own. This is a new direction, though, for the most part, blowing out into the outfield. Usually it's the opposites. Usually it comes from right field in. This one, ground ball. Quayle fields it cleanly. The throw to first gets past Schaefer. The runner, confused, thought about going to second. He'll hold back at first. I think he was going to beat the throw nonetheless, but I think we'll mark that as an error E6. Run scores for Whitefish Bay. It is now eight to three here in the fifth. With one out still. Catcher now off the bat for the Blue Dukes. Decent lead over at first. Doesn't show. And he gets hit. So two on with one out. Here in the fifth. 
Back to the top of the order with Mr. Council up. Curtis here running for the catcher. Also adds more wheels on bases for Whitefish Bay as they want to go home early. Grafton trying to hold on for dear life. And make this a ball game. First pitch, both runners go. And both are safe. No one said he was going. It kind of caught everybody by surprise. As a double steal. As Grafton mentally might be checked out. That one, ground ball. Gets through for a base hit. One will score. Here comes the other. He scores. As it is now 10 to 3, Whitefish Bay. Two runs single for Jack Council. Still one out. Here's Mitch Voigt. Decent lead over at first. He'll probably steal again. Not on the first pitch, as that's in there for strike one, 0 and 1. The 0 1. Ball high as Tresky trying to throw quick, not get that leg up so high to waste time. Because every single runner that has stolen a base has stolen safely other than the time that Hunter Schmidt picked off Jack Council when he tried to go from second to third. He just made a move back towards second and got him in a pickle. And that was recorded for an out. That one swung at and missed for strike two, two and two. Good off speed there from Tresky. Two, two with one out and runner on first. Decent lead. Here it goes. That one. Reach for ground ball. Puello can't field it cleanly. Council will make his way over to third standing. And I would mark that as a single. It was hit hard enough. So runners on the corners with one out for Michael Lippi. Another power hitter. As Voigt earlier, who was on first, homered back in the second. It's a two-run blast in the left. As he steals. That ball was inside. No chance for Vince to make a throw down. I don't think he would have anyways, since there's a runner on third. So two runners in scoring position now for the Blue Dukes. 1-0, ball high, 2-0. Tresky looking to battle back now. As I said earlier, it's a tough task to just throw these guys competitive pitches, pitches to hit, because all these guys can hit. There's one a rip in the right center, base hit. One will score, and so will the other. Score is now 12 to 3 as Whitefish Bay has blown this wide open here in the fifth. And unfortunately, if they get one more, the run rule is in play if Grafton doesn't score in the bottom of the fifth. So that mercy rule run is on first for Whitefish Bay for JD Dix. First pitch he sees is a strike 0 and 1. Obviously not what you want for the Blackhawks, but I wouldn't say it's not what you expected. The 0 one fouled back, 0-2. It's just Whitefish Bay is that good of a team. They have looked unstoppable all year. Tresky comes set. The 0-2. 
all high. One and two. Last time Grafton faced Whitefish Bay, Blue Dukes won 14 to seven. One, two. Just outside, two and two. Ball got out of Cameron Easy's glove there, but the runner stays at first. There's, I'm pretty sure Whitefish Bay is still the state's number one ranked team. Don't think they've gone down. Is that ball? It was ball three, so the count is now full. Dix battling back from an 0-2 count. Here it is. Runner goes. Ball four. That's another walk. So runners on first and second with one out still. There's another runner in scoring position. That runner on second would be would give Whitefish Bay the 10-run lead. First pitch is a ball low and inside, 1-0 and for DJ Kojis. one 0 That one swung at. Right field, Hildebrand looking back. Makes the catch for out number two. Runner from second will tag his way on over to third. Runner at first will stay put. So runners on the corners with two outs now. Nice play from Hildebrand, fighting the win. Up now is Austin Weinke. As I mentioned earlier, the first five hitters in this order, all Division I commits for college baseball. First pitch from Tresky was swung at and missed for strike one. Nice pitch there. Tresky comes set, fires. That one swung at, driven into left field. That ball is out of here. The second home run today. It's a three-run blast into left center. And that adds three more. Their score is now 15 to three. Made that swing look easy. What's crazy is the reaction. Is what gets me, especially from Whitefish Bay. They are so used to it at this point. So two outs still. 15 to 3. Is our score. It's Coach Durst calls time. I wonder why. I think Tresky will be done. I think they're going to save him for pitch count reasons so he can pitch again later this week. So that's it for him. Up now will be Michael Mookie. It's Tresky walks back to the dugout says, I knew that would happen. Yeah, it's... Fortunately, that's been the case so far today. Not much you can really do. They have just been hitting the ball so well. So the new pitcher for Grafton will be Michael Mookie. So he'll get warmed up here. We'll be right back. Oh. 
Right, we're back now top of the fifth still two outs nobody on for whitefish bay michael mookie the new pitcher for the blackhawks first pitch he throws his ball high and inside one and oh grafton looking to just get one more and they would need three runs in the bottom of the fifth to keep this game going second pitch is in there for strike one one and one A 1-1. One, one. Ball outside. 2-1. and one. The 2-1. One. Ball in the turf. 3-1. and one. Wind up for Mookie. That is ball 4. And the first man he faces is a walk. So a runner on first now with two outs. For number two, Jack Now. First pitch, high and inside, gets past Cameron Easy. The runner will easily advance to second on a wild pitch. 1-0. Oh. Mookie comes set, looks over at second. Fires. That one is a ball high. His now holds. Thought about it for a second. And pulled back. 2 0. Oh. There it is. That one hit out of play. Behind Grafton's dugout. 2 and 1. The two one, that one hit up shallow left field. Quayle's under it, cannot make the catch as he was falling backwards. So that ball just kept traveling, traveling back. So the run will score 16 to three. And unfortunately Quayle is still down. I think he hit his head on the ground. Definitely doesn't feel good. Although luckily it was the grass, not the turf. Is he okay as he gets up? Runner stays at first. And a new batter is up in place of the starting catcher. 
unfortunately did not get the reserves name so he's his name is number four as it's a pinch hit so nine one two are due for the blue dukes decent lead over at first first pitch that's swung at driven in the left for a base hit runner holds at second and there's two on with two out here in the fifth. Score is 16 to 3. One time, I remember back in, I think it was seventh grade All Stars, we played Whitefish Bay. And uh, the score was worse than this 28 to 3 or 28 to 4 is our final score. Is that ball is ripped foul. 0 and 1. That was not a fun game to be a part of. If you think this is bad, face these same group of guys back in 7th grade. I I was at a loss for words. I never seen 28 runs get put up in a game and that was only in 5 innings. Too because of the run rule. That ball was outside one and one. <laughs> that was a long day. Won a couple of games though that that year in the tournament as that one is fouled back. But uh, Whitefish Bay was unfortunately the one seed that year. Didn't end in our favor. The year after though we we won our region. And went to state. Next pitch. Driven in the left, but right at Hunter Schmidt. And that will finally end the inning. Our score is 16 to 3. The magic number is 4. Grafton wants to keep playing. Welcome back. Bottom of the fifth here at Ninth Avenue Field. Maddox Durst will lead things off. It's Durst and back to the top of the order with Lemke and Faust. First pitch to Maddox is in there for strike one. The magic number is four for Grafton to keep this game going. And if not, it will be cut short. The 0 1 is a ball low, one and one. We would love to see Grafton put up a fight here battle back a little bit. One one in there for strike two, one and two. Obviously it's hard to come back and win from a 16 to three deficit. But to be able to put up a couple runs and play a couple more innings would not hurt this morale as much. That ball is outside two and two. Same pitcher out there for the Blue Dukes, the 2-2. Two, two. Ground ball to first. First baseman bobbled it, but gets back into his glove, and he'll step on first himself, three that unassisted. For out number one, back to the top of the order, Mason Lemke. Nobody on and one out. Not bad. 
at bat there from Durst. All he can ask is to put the ball in play. Anything's possible. First pitch to Lemke. It was a ball high, 1-0. It's hard to imagine what the thoughts were going into this game. So everyone probably thought differently. As that pitch is in there for strike one, one and one. One, one. That one is lined right to the first baseman for out number two. That was a good rip there. Just right at him. So it's two down for number 33, Carson Faust. He is the last man to try to keep this game going. First pitch to Carson. Hit foul behind the plate, 0 and 1. Just under it. The 0 1 is a ball in the turf. 1 and 1. Need base runners here if you want to make something happen. Maybe a two-out rally. You never know. 1-1. One, one. That one is ripped in the right. Right fielder will make the catch. And that will do it. So our final score through five innings today, Whitefish Bay 16, Grafton 3. We thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. This morning, smile with the rising sun, really